We got some awesome The Witcher 4 news. Stay tuned for that. What's up, guys? I'm Frankie Boy, and I'm back. I'm almost healthy right now. As you can hear from my voice, I was sick. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of other projects going on on my German main channel. So long time no see you right here on The Witcher. But let's talk about The Witcher 4 news, because CD Projekt Red dropped some information around about The Witcher 4 on their latest conference. And yeah, let's start off with the first thing. It's a joke. Yeah, Ubisoft said Skull and Bones is a 4A game. Now, The Witcher 4 is a... 5A game, and that's of course just a joke by CD Projekt Red, but I think that's kind of funny and ridiculous what Ubisoft said about Skull and Bones, so nice pickup on that line. Now let's talk about The Witcher 4. The Witcher 4 wants to take some risks, and that's kind of surprising in my opinion, because The Witcher 3 was so nice, it was almost a perfect game, except for some uh, things I guess, and it's still my favorite game today. And they don't want to, like, copy The Witcher 3 and just say, yeah, The Witcher 4 is the same game, but with another story, uh, with uh, better graphics. Yeah, they really want to go the route and take some risks. Novakovsky of CD Projekt Red said the following. When it's about taking risks in innovative elements, developing a game, it's always, like, a risky thing. And they're trying to push new borders to set new heights and levels and explore new things they never did before. And that sounds really awesome, in my opinion. When talking about new borders and exploring new things, you can imagine everything and anything. Maybe it's just like um, AI-based storytelling for side quests that will eventually pick up everywhere and the the whole environment reacts to the things with, with uh, AI. I can totally imagine like putting AI into games will be the future for storytelling maybe and for other things as well so you can like let, get get those quests popping up all the time even in a single player open world RPG it will always have some content to play that would be one of my ideas the other one could be like a procedural generated world well I don't think that will happen because it's a story based open world game but yeah nothing is impossible when it comes to gaming software is developing so fast and yeah, only the sky and the technical borders are the limits and right now the technical borders are the systems on which they are played e.g. PlayStation 5 and PC but you could also use like something like streaming games and Ubisoft is currently developing their big cloud service which will help you guys to to um, develop games I'm developing a game myself right now and I can see yeah it's quite a tough thing to do and uh, the whole thing develops all the time and it changes all the time. Novakowski von 3D Project Brad says the following as well. Yeah, that's a broad field he's been talking about, but he can't go into detail without talking about the game itself. And uh, he says, yeah, I want to say that you should not expect The Witcher 3 with a new skin. It's a totally new game and that's really awesome. Thank you so much for that and I'm looking forward to it. Next news is no microtransactions in single player content in The Witcher 4. So let me quickly explain why this might be a hint. Telling you no, no microtransactions in single player content, it excludes multiplayer content, of course. And this hints to the possibility, the maybe very small possibility of a multiplayer mode for The Witcher 4 Polaris. It's possible, but I wouldn't say that this will come. If you ask me, they will leave it as a single player brand and develop multiplayer titles externally. So yeah, great. No microtransactions, you don't need it. The Witcher sold so well, they saw you don't need that. Oh, and by the way, there are currently 403 people working on The Witcher Polaris of 620 seven developers in total so quite a lot of guys are working on the witcher 4 which is great in my opinion because a lot of workers on the projects that means the vision is already there they know which route to take they are currently maybe building the world itself before telling the stories in there or so because yeah that's how i would approach it i guess like first build a world and then fill it with life and yeah, I can totally see them creating the world of The Witcher or recreating it maybe 400 years before Geralt, maybe while Geralt is there or after him. There are so many possibilities, but one thing that's for sure, it won't be Geralt. That's sad, I know, but Geralt of Rivia's story is 
told. They have stated that a lot of times and the game Witcher Polaris won't be called The Witcher 4, it's just my working title, so you guys all know, okay, it's the next Witcher game. But don't expect it to be Geralt of Rivia. And I can imagine so many things, like creating Kaer Mohan, maybe you will be the Witcher founding the, the fortress, or you will be like a witch and just exploring the world with witchers. Um, maybe a, a group experiences like in Dragon's Dogma can be implemented into the game and you will form a group of witchers doing work. There are so many possibilities, including the statement that this won't be Witcher 3 with a new skin. So yeah, I'm super curious what those 403 people are doing right now on the project. And The Witcher 3, it's still my favorite game today. Still no other game in the last nine years has hit that benchmark. I mean, there are a lot of great other games that have been released since that. I mean, Red Dead Redemption 2, for example, or other stuff that has been released. I love the Assassin's Creed franchise, but it's not there. It's not on the Witcher level. And I'm super curious if CD Projekt Red will manage to reach their own benchmark, because it's quite a th tough thing to do. With Cyberpunk, they almost hit it, in my opinion. After two or three years, they fixed the game. But yeah, when it was released, it w w would not reach to anything like The Witcher 3. And you can see on this channel, it's totally Witcher 3 based, because I love the game so much and I want to talk about it all day, all night. Well, of course, if I'm healthy right now, I'm not. Oh, and yeah, just just a quick fun fact. Did you know you can get to the camp of, uh, I think it's the Nilfgaardian army, or you can get behind it into the end of the world. Quite a funny glitch that you should try out. Oh, and CD Projekt Red, they said they don't want to talk about a release date yet. And why is that? Of course, the cyberpunk fiasco. It was delayed so many times. I think they really learned out of it and they want to work on the project until it's almost done and then release it. Um, I mean, Ubisoft does this as well, except for Skull and Bones. That's always the big exception. But yeah, they almost always announce their title or do the gameplay reveal like three or four months ahead and then the game is almost really done. So they know, yeah, they might hit that benchmark and be there in time. CD Projekt Red doesn't want to talk about a date right now. Not even anything. Yeah, no, no year, no decade nothing so i would love to see it in the next years of course but i know it's surreal it's it's unreal to get that and i think this game it might be there in 2028 if you ask me because if you like take into account that there might be a development hell that they could go through or there might be other mistakes they are making along the path exploring those new things that they talked about and this will happen it's just a matter of how can they fix it. And visions of games might change as well along the path and you might recreate it yet another time. So first thing first, I'm super curious if they stay uh, creative, if the developers stay motivated. I mean, there has been a lot of crunch in Cyberpunk 2077 and that's one of the big critiques of the game as well. The crunch times along those employees. And I hope they will treat them better on this project with less pressure but more room to breathe to create awesome open world experiences like we had in The Witcher 3. I mean, look at this. It's a game from 2015 and it looks so awesome with the 4K ray tracing update. And I can't believe it's already more than one year old that this update hit. All right, guys, that's it for today. Super happy to talk about The Witcher again with you guys. And I'm keeping you up to date on all the news The Witcher 4 on this channel. So feel free to check out this video on The Witcher 4 or this video, which will be a recommendation for you guys. Thank you so much for sticking there to the end. I really appreciate it. And if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and activate that bell. Thank you so much and goodbye.